Hi right, guys, thought I would just do a quick video on one of my most used power tools. This is the DeWalt DCS355 uh, oscillating multi-tool. Uh, obviously I do a lot of reno renovations and home improvement type work. Uh, so a lot of different trades I cover and this, this tool just comes in so handy in so many different situations. So I thought I would just do a quick video showing you a lot of different situations that I would use this. Uh, machine for. Right, so firstly you get a huge a huge array of blades for these uh, these tools. Um, these are the ones I use. And you can go bananas uh, with these blades and get you know, 20 different types, but I, I tailor the blades you know, for my specific situations or specific needs. Right, there's the tool, there's the blades. Now we'll go on to the 20 most common situations where I would use the blades. Starting with number one. Okay, so here's a common use that I would use this for. Uh, it would be your standard, so just a single gang uh, electrical back box. Yeah, it's fit the back box now, it's ready obviously to you know, fit whatever electrical plate you want. Another thing I would use this for is when you're fishing cables down a wall, whether it's behind a TV or just generally fishing electrical cables or aerial points down behind plasterboard walls. Just use our electrical fish rod, you know, to, to fish cables through the walls um, and, and use these little holes as access points. Obviously, it's such a neat cut with the, the multi tool that once you're finished, you know, you can just place that, you know, your off cut back in and just simply fill it over, um, no problem at all. Another thing you can do uh, on this theme is, say, for instance, you're putting in. I don't know, HDMI cables or something like that in behind for a TV and you need to make this opening bigger in the back of the back box the dry lining box, sorry you can quite easily just use this blade and cut the plastic, you know Yeah, something like that obviously it would file all the rough edges and that off but um, just shows you how you can cut into plastic really easily just to open this up slightly Another quick use, if you're, for instance, laying plywood in a floor uh, before putting laminate flooring down or whatever, you go just to level off the floor and you need to cut out a section, you know, to get around a, a pipe or whatever it may be, just, you know, notching plywood. Again, this tool's ideal for that, just... <laughs> Quick as that, you can see how quickly it does it. Um, you can be really precise if you take your time with these as well. So another use, so it's from plywood. Yeah, another use I've found this this tool extremely useful for is when you're doing laminate flooring or vinyl flooring, and you need to get the skirting boards off. You know to, to create a neat finish. You know to slip under the skirting boards. And I'm trying to replicate a, a radiator pipe here, so that this could be a, a pipe to a radiator. Um, a lot of the times the, the, the pipes are hard against the, the skirting board so you can't get them prized off, you know, to get the, the flooring, so, you know, to get them out and then up to get the nails out. So typically sometimes you would find a, you know, a fixing in there, for instance, with a nail, so, you know, what I would use this tool for is get the blade on, put it at an angle like that, slip it down in behind the skirting board and, you know, and just back and forward and cut the nail. You know, once that's cut, you could then lift the float the skirting board up without having to take it out. Yeah, so that way you don't need to mess about with any of the plumbing, you know, the heating system. You try to get the skirting board out. Um, but you know, while I've got this set up as well, another another thing you can do here with skirting boards, um, we'll just replicate. We'll say this pipe's the side of a unit or something, a kitchen unit or a vanity unit going in against the skirting board. Now, without having to take the skirting board off, what you can do is mark a line down the skirting board, you know, and then just cut it in situation. 
you know, in situ. So you just cut that straight up there. Remove that piece and put your, your unit in without having to take the skirting board off. Again, so it's effectively a plunge saw. You're plunging in and cutting without without the need to remove trim or anything like that. So brilliant. Okay, so we've got our metal cutting blade on now. When you use one of these, obviously you can cut metal with it. So one of the ways you can use it is to cut copper pipe. You go. Obviously it's not ideal, but um, it's just showing that you can do that. So if you had a pipe under a floor or something with difficult, you know, you're ripping it out, difficult to access, just plunge this in and cut it. Okay, so on the plumbing theme, uh, another situation where I would use this a lot, well not a lot, but when you need it, you need it, if you know what I mean. When you're trying to get a, a cistern off a close coupled toilet, we've all been there, <laughs> these bolts are rusted solid underneath and you just cannot get them off to get to get the cistern away from the actual toilet pan. So this tool comes in really handy sometimes, you can just slip it in, in between the, the pan and the cistern and you know just just cut the bolt using this. Um, you know, years ago I used to, if I had to do this, I would use a grinder and try and cut the wing nut off, but it's just, it's not ideal. Okay, another one still with plumbing is obviously plastic waste pipe. It can be cut real easily with the, the multi-tool. Um, you know, I'll show you, demonstrate quickly. You can see how quick that cuts, you know, it just cuts. Obviously, if you take your time, you can do it really neatly and then deburr the pipe. So, there you go. Another obvious use for this with a metal blade is cutting nails out. Obviously, it's a loose nail, you wouldn't do it in this scenario, but, um, you know, if you can imagine something nailed to here and you just couldn't get a grip of the nail, you could slip the tool down the back of the material, whatever it was, and cut the nail, you know, and able to get it off, so just quickly. As quick as that, just uh, flush cuts the nail straight off. There's one time when I used that similar scenario to that, it's when the uh, fence panels are secured to fence posts. Somebody's nailed them on instead of using brackets. You can just slip the multi-tool in between the, the panel and the post and cut the nails. And just, and then just take the panel out. It's just so much easier. Another one quickly is acrylic wall panels. So these are the panels that you fit in kitchens or bathrooms. Just thin acrylic sheets, you know, to act as a splashback. A lot of the times when you're fitting these, you need to notch them around, you know, socket outlets, things like that. This is where the, this tool's brilliant for that. Just like this. Uh, acrylic's notoriously difficult to cut um, because it, it chips quite a lot um, and splinters. But you find with the multi-tool that you can cut that fairly well and it doesn't doesn't chip or splinter. So for cutting around sockets or even plunge cutting into the acrylic, you know if you want a square in there, the multi-tool is absolutely ideal for that. Okay, another situation uh, you can put on the the carbide. Uh, this is the blade I normally use for taking grout out between tiles, but you, actually, you can actually use this for cutting tiles or, or shaping tiles, you know, just that. just as I'm demonstrating here. So you could be putting this up against a, you know, where a socket outlet is and you need to notch out a little bit for the, the electrical screw to go through. Um, to save you going away down to your, your cutting equipment, your, your tile saw or whatever, you could simply use the, the multi-tool. Take your time and just nick that out. But aside from uh, nicking, you know, little small areas of tiles, the main purpose of this blade is for raking grout out. So if you can imagine, I've just set out, sorry, it's some old tiles, but if you can imagine grout in here that's all discoloured, black, mouldy or whatever, and you need to dig it out to regrout, and um, this is where this tool's invaluable. You know, you just run along the run along the grout lines, take it out, and then regrout the tiles. Now the, the floor I can get. It can be slipped under there. Yeah, we'll just got boards on here. So 
Right, another one guys. Uh, bear with me with the materials and the demonstration. I'm a bit ill prepared here, but what I'm trying to replicate here is floorboards. So tongue and groove floorboards. Um, in order I maybe get a section of flooring up. Um, it's, it's usually really difficult if, they, if there's a tongue and groove in there. So what you can do, um, what you always do really, is the, the multi-tool. Slip it down into the joint and, and run along that joint and just cut the tongue off of the flooring. Uh, a couple of runs along there and then you'll find you can get a, a pry bar or something in there and then actually pry the flooring up. So it's another use, that's probably one of the most common uses for the multi-tool. Um, another common use in the same theme, whether it's floorboards or chipboard flooring, is to, to cut out hatches, you know, if you need to get under the floor, especially electricians or plumbers. Uh, the multi-tool's excellent for that, you know, just plunge, plunge cut again. Uh, and you can, you can cut the area out quite easily. Okay, there's another use that that's really common for me anyway, uh, the, the, those terrible thin bath panels, uh, you know, the, the cheap plastic bath panels. They never fit those things, so this particular blade here is great for, for cutting those. So you just run it up the, you know, really thin plastic, really thin and flimsy, but these blades are so accurate if you just take your time, you can just cut some intricate shapes. So this is the bath panel blade, in my opinion, for me. <laughs> uh, just a great blade. Uh, while I'm here, while I'm discussing this, um, the reason I use the DeWalt uh, multi-tool, other than being on the DeWalt platform obviously, is the, the quick release option. So with the DeWalt, all you do is press the lever in and then the blade just simply pulls out. Like that, so depress the blade, you can see me depress it and you can, you know, you can spin the, the blade in any direction. Let, the, let go of the blade and the, it just simply locks into place. Yeah, as I was saying, th these are the DeWalt blades that just slip on, but the, the standard, or a lot of the other multi-tools, I've got another one here, I've got a, this is a cheap old Ryobi one that I used to use for uh, tiling. But you can see how you need an Allen key, you know, to change the blades. Um, here's a typical blade here. Um, but you would need to actually, you know, undo this nut, put the blade on, and do it up. Um, it's just it's so time consuming and you know, it's a bit awkward. You know when you're used to when you're used to just using the lever system, press the lever, get the blade, slip it on, that's it, it's done, you know, so it's a time saver. So this DeWalt was a, if you're thinking about getting a multi-tool, I would highly recommend the DeWalt if you're gonna do any amount of DIY. The harder you depress it, the faster the tool goes. So there is great control over that. So that coupled with the, the quick release system makes this the, the multi-tool of choice, in my, my opinion. Right guys, there's one other thing that I use the, the multi-tool for uh, fairly often, is when I'm refinishing um, kitchen worktops. I will use the sanding attachment, a small attachment. Obviously I'll use an orbital sander to sand the, the worktops, but uh, obviously in the corners or you know, in some intricate places, you need to use the, the small you know, the detail sander. So these are the sander bars just stick on here with Velcro. And you can use these to get into any, all the nooks and crannies. So that's a, an, another thing I would use the, the multi-tool for, and it is good for that. The DeWalt's far superior to this, um, but again, I'm not a snob when it comes to tools. The Ryobi's perfectly adequate, you know, if that's if that's what your budget calls for. Uh, it's a good enough tool. It's never really caused me any problems. Uh, but hopefully I've covered a few things you can do with the multi-tool. Uh, I've, I've tried to cover what I use it for, but there's probably another 100 different things you could use it for that other people use it for. But please guys, um, if there's any other interesting ways you use the multi-tool, please stick it in the comments. Just to let some other people know what you can use them for. Uh, that would be fantastic. If you enjoyed the video, as always, uh, give it a thumbs up guys if you can. Anybody new here, please subscribe my channel by clicking the button there. Uh, current subscribers as always, thanks very much. Um, sorry for the, the variety in content on this channel at the moment. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what the channel's all about really. I'm, I'm just so new to YouTube. Uh, but we'll try and niche down into certain topics so, you know, that interests most people. Uh, but again guys, thanks very much and take it easy as always. <laughs>
Oh, 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 oh,